Alicia Binti Sharzula and my matrix number is 051290. Okay, um, good morning everyone. My name is Siti Nor Alisha Aina Binti Nor Halim and my matrix number is 049398. Thank you. Okay, so you guys can take your place. Okay, so I'll be starting the presentation for today. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, so uh, before I start, I would like to, uh, to tell you guys, I'm uh, not to tell, to make you guys do something to test your uh, paying attention level okay so when i say war you guys say bang when, when i say war you guys say bang 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 okay got it we give it a try war war okay great so we'll see whether you pay attention or not okay okay let's start Okay, so we have Germans, Roman, Scandinavian, Norman, the Hundred Years War, and British colonization. And I'll be presenting the topic for Germans. Okay, there are two parts, two parts of the German. First is the invasion of German tribes, and the next is the influence of the English language. Okay, so. We'll go first for the invasion of German tribes. As we all know, okay, before I, we, I start, I want to make it clear for all of us so that we won't be lost in the in this presentation and the future presentation. So, this is the, uh, the abbreviations for AD. It's actually mean, it actually means Anno Domino, Anno Domini, in the years of Lord, or we can say as uh, the years that the year that Jesus was born. And then for BC, it's before Christ. CE is common error, and BC is before common error. So you guys get it? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so I'll be explaining about the invasion of German tribes. In 430 AD, I know the meaning. The Jutes, uh, this is uh, the Jutes, the Angles, and the Saxons are the 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 tribes that invade British. So uh, the Jutes, they invade Ken, Hanspear and Isles of Wight. They are the uh, white. They are the places in the British island. The Angles, they invade Mercia, East Anglia and North Rumbia. For the Saxons, they invade Essex, Wessex and Sussex. So these Germanic tribes, they began to establish permanent bases in the British uh, island, and then they displaced the native Celts. The Celts are the British people, as we learned before. Okay, next. So this is the map, as you can see, the tribes that came from German, they invade the British Isles, and then they took all this area, as you can see. Okay, next. So, uh, just like what we have today, we have different dialects, we have Klantanese, we have uh, Kedahan, and also we have different dialects, but in a whole, we can understand each other, right? So, same goes to the Germanic tribes. Even though they are they are not from the same area, but they can mutually understand each other because of their dialect, because of their language, which they speak German. So, and then, these are the words, that, the uh, example of words, you can read it, because uh, I will, I'll be explaining about the influence of German language later on the second part. And so the influx of Germanic people, they actually they are not just uh, invading the British uh, island, but they actually uh, managed to make a gradual encroachment between themselves. So rather than they just invade the place, they also uh, make like a community among them in British. So these tribes they gradually colonized the island and then big up. They managed to to invade the remote areas because they remain the place for the Celts to stay. Next. So, when the, uh, the invasion happens, so uh, the Celts people were pushed further back by the invaders, which were the Germanic tribes, and then 
they choose to leave uh, whether they want to stay or some of them choose to leave and they leave uh, they flew to Scotland, Wales, Cornwall Island, Virginia region of Northern France and some mainland in Europe. So because of that uh, immersion, we can call it as a immersion. So they they so when they stay at those countries, so they use their Celtic language that only survives that survives today only in the Gaelic language which is Scotland and Ireland, the Welsh of okay. Wales, the Breton language of Brittany. So just like what we learned last week from the last group present the last week group presenters, the Cornish and the Max language, which are the Celtic language, are now both deaf languages. So they are from the last week topics and today's topics. Next. Okay, so this is the interesting part. <coughs> so uh, this is actually uh, what I have told earlier, but I will make it uh, clearer. So the Germanic tribe settled in seven smaller kingdoms called Heptarchy. So as you can see, it's the same: the Saxons in Essex, Wessex, and Sussex; the Angles in East Anglia, Mercia, and Northumbria; and the Jutes in Kent and Hampshire. So there are the ev there are evidence that they came to England and invaded. They came to British and invaded because they put their language, uh, they put their name in the at, at the areas in British. As you can see, for the word ending with ing, which means people. Example: Worthing, Reading, and Hastings. Uh, for the town, meaning enclosure or village. Uh, example: Totton, Burton, and Luton. For ford, meaning a river crossing. For example, Ashford, Bradford, Watford. Ham meaning farm, Nottingham, Birmingham, Greenham, Westham, and also state for meaning aside, Ham state. So as you can see, these uh, names are actually familiar because they 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 have been used from the German uh, era until now. Because we have Reading Football Club, we have Watford Football Club, Nottingham, Birmingham. So uh, these are the evidence that the name is still being used by the people in British. Okay, next. Okay, so uh, by uh, regarding to the invasion, they were called as the Anglo-Saxon nation because of their tribes. So once they are known as Albion, then they changed to Britannia under the Roman, and then they are known, known as Anglaland or Englaland, which means the land of the Angles. And lastly, they shortened the name to England, which we call today England. That's how they got the name. And then, so it's a language is English or Old English which uh, so over time there are four major dialects that have been used uh, by the Old, Old English which the North Rumbian in North of England, the Mercian in the Midlands, the West Saxon in South and West and the Kentish in the South East. So you can see from this map these are, uh, are the areas that have, that have been evaded by the German tribe and they use the, language, the Old English language in this area. Understand? Why? What? Bang. Great. Next. Okay, so I have covered the part for the invasion of German tribes. Now we'll go to the influence to English language. Okay, so uh, just like what the last week's presenter had told, these are the percentage of uh, the languages that influence English. So as we can see, 26% of Germanic language uh, influence English language. So I'll be I'll be explaining about it after this. Okay, thanks. Okay, this is just like a, a timeline to show how the the German track came and what does what what do they uh, influence. So the Angles, Saxons, and Jutes they invaded England in the fifth century. So they are Germanic people, so they use German language. And then the Vikings came from the 8th, 8th until the 11th centuries, and they use Old Norse, also a Germanic language. So, in conclusion, from 5th until 11th century, they use uh, Germanic language in the area that they invaded. So, technically, they use uh, the people in that area use German language to speak among them. So, from there, from there, many English words have been derived from the German. As you can see, this is umlauts. Can you say umlauts? 
Okay. We used to see uh, on German uh, writing where we have this uh, double dot diacritic. You can see it's like uh, that. That is the the writing that they use, and then been replaced by English umlaut letters, which 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 are a e o e u e and so on. And this uh, symbol, uh, or we can say as beta symbol that we learned before, we generally change to S S. Okay. Okay, so I'll be teaching you German class for today. <laughs> so the A am loud. The A is pronounced is pronounced like the A in apple and A. Okay, A apple. The O am loud sounds sounds similar to the E in her her uh, her. So the uh, it's actually not an O sound, but it's the O O E sounds. Okay. Her, bur, er, burn, okay? Understand? And then the U on that, uh, it's, it actually doesn't have, doesn't have a really equal in English, but you can see for the, yeah, for the letter U in French, it sounds just like German U. Don't worry, I'll be teaching a lot more about the German language. Okay. So, when I, uh, when I say the word, you repeat after me, okay? Okay, for the A on that, Das Mädchen, which means the girl, and then the Bären. You you have to make the 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 Bären sound. That's how German people say. Okay, again, the Bären, which means the best, and then the ka the Kaffer, which means the bitter. Okay, next for the O am Lauf, Schön, which means beautiful. So you can say to your girlfriend, you are so shown. <laughs> and then uh, the next is the loven, which means the lion. Next, the vogel, which means the bird. And this one is bullet, which means stupid. So you can also use this word to your friends so they won't recognize it. You can say, hey, you are bullet. They won't really know what it means, right? And the last one is the U am lock. Kusen, which means to kiss. Uwen, which means to exercise. Dun, which means fin. This one is my favorite uh, word. The kufum, which means the exam. And this is four. It's like, uh, okay, it's okay. Uh, I think that my German, my German is not very well, but we will learn it together. Wait, eh? please wait. Basically, we have the sound clip, so we will play right now. I just want to teach you guys German first, whether it is correct or not. Oh, thank you. Oh, unfortunately, the speaker doesn't work. So just bear with me with the with what I have taught you guys. You want to try it again? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's okay. Uh, so, uh, so these these are not the words that come from uh, that used in English. That is, just that I just want to teach you guys how to speak German. So, okay, next. Okay, so I'll share with you guys 16 words that came from German. Actually, we have more than that. We have 76. We have more than 76 actually. But I'll just share with you guys the words that we usually use in our daily routine. So first is actually. You know what is actually? The actually, the rock climbers always do that. That that word from German. German, and then blitz. You know blitz creek. Ah, uh, that, that is actually the name of the war that by, that we have been used by the German. But in in English, it means light lightning, lightning, lightning. So you can say like this example: a blitz by the defense on an American football quarterback, which means he is very fast. Okay, and then cobalt is the element that we learn in chemistry, and doppelganger. Ah, uh, I'm sure that 
most of us have heard this word doppelganger it means uh, someone that look alike or duplicate us next okay then fast or festival that we use that we usually use this word also came from german and then flat so flat is uh, it means criticism so you can start saying stop giving me a flat it's flat flat okay and then uh Jason died, which means bless you and hamster the cute creature that uh hamster also came from german that they use a hamster and then the english takes uh the word and use it as an english language okay number nine is kaput kaput not kaput or is kaput which means uh broken so you can say my car is kaput or my phone is kaput uh, these words are English words, so you can really use them in writing to help you out, okay? And then kindergarten. This word also came from German, which we thought it was from English. And angst, which means fear. And also noodle, the thing that we used to eat, also came from German. Okay, the last four words, Paul the Jeff, you know, the scary thing in movie, uh, Pretel. Pretel is someone who talks too much. So you can just sound them with you are such a pretzel. You can say that. And then rucksack or backpack, we use uh, you, we usually use the word these words. And lastly spritz. You know spritz? Uh, they take the word from the we, they take the name from the word spritz, which means a, a small bit of where they which this you can see. I mean, you may think this is a slang but it it is actually a re, real English and German word. So you can use it when you are writing something or you can just say it to your friend I want some blitz okay what? Hey. you guys are not paying attention <laughs> so this is, these are my references and by that I ending my presentation for today I'll give to my next uh, teammates thank you Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh my name is Nur Fatina Atiyah binti Abu Razak. <coughs> so I want everyone to take a deep breath, breath, because um, our topic this week is very fun, very fun, and has have a lot of cute facts. So I'm going to present about invasion of Romans. So for those who don't know about, who don't know the means of invasion, invasion means entering another country in order to take control of it. Next. Okay. Before anything else, I want all of you to recall about last week's presentation. I will not ask question. Okay. The first people in England about whose language we have definite knowledge are the Celts. Celtic was probably the first Indo-European tongue to be spoken in England. So today I will, we are going to learn about Latin language, which is one of the Indo-European language. <clears throat> so Latin was spoken rather extensively. Extensively means covering a large area for a period of about four centuries before the coming of English. Latin was introduced when Britain became a province of the Roman Empire. Do you know what province is? Yeah. Province means wilayah in Melayu. In Malay, sorry. Next. Okay, the Romans in Britain. So this is Julius Caesar, not Cat Cat Caesar. Not that Caesar. So please remember his. Please remember his face because this is the only face that we can find in, in on the internet of Julius Caesar. Next. Okay. So this is the timeline of how Julius Caesar invade England. So on summer of 55 BC before Christ. Julius Caesar having complete the conquest of Gaul. So he was like, I want to invade England, but his objective for doing that is not known for certain. 
he was not contemplating to conquest the island. Probably his main purpose was to discourage the Celts of Britain from coming to the existence of Celts in gold. So unfortunately, the expedition ended disastrously because uh, his transport encountered a storm, deprived him of deprived him of his cavalry support. So Julius Caesar was like, oh, there's a storm in France. So we, so he returned back to Gaul. So the expedition had resulted in no material gain and some loss of prestige. But the following summer, Julius Caesar invaded again the island after much more elaborate preparations. And luckily he succeeded in establishing himself in the southeast. Southeast. <laughs> he exacted tribute from them, which was never paid, and returned to Gaul. He had no means struck terror into the heart of the Celts, and Britain was not troubled by Roman legions for nearly 100 years. What was what he had no means struck terror into the hearts of the Celts mean he didn't want to attack or do violence towards the Celts. He just want to invade because he want to exact tribute from them. Understand? Do you know what exact tribute means? Tuntut hutang. Next. Okay, the Roman conquest. On AD 43, the Emperor Claudius decided to undertake the actual conquest of the island. So before that, Julius Caesar has invaded the island which is England but he only invade the island he do he didn't conquest the island so Emperor Claudius decided to undertake the island he sent 40,000 armies to Britain within three years he had controlled the peoples of central and south eastern regions then he brought almost all of England under Roman rule so on AD 61 the cats uprose what is uprose Memberontak. Okay. So, Bodica, the widow of one of the Celtic chiefs, and seventy thousand Romans and Romanized Britons massacred. What is massacre? They were killed. Uh, they were killed simultaneously. I'm okay. Next. Okay, so this is Claudius. Uh, nothing much. Next. Okay, so this is the map of Scotland, England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. So the um, the Claudius uh, con controlled the southeastern region. So this is England, and this is the southeastern regions of England. Next. So this is Bodica, uh, one of the the widow of one of the Celts chief. So it was said that Bodica was stripped and flogged and she was raped. Eh? So he uh, her daughters are uh, raped. Rape. Rape. Okay, next. Okay. On AD 78 to 85, under the Roman governor Agricola, the northern frontier was advanced to the Solway and the time. The conquest may be said to have been complete. The Romans never crossed far into the mountains of Wales and Scotland. They even protect the northern boundary by a stone wall stretching across England at approximately the limits of Agricola's permanent conquest. Uh, next. Uh, next. Okay. So the the armies didn't penetrate um, to the mountains of Wales and Scotland, so they stayed in England. They don't. They didn't cross Scotland and Wales. 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 Next. Okay. So this is the wall, the stone wall, 